Welcome back to Elevate Inspiration for Sunday School. I come to you from Abbeville Memorial Church of God in Christ. My name is Nikki Baker, and the subject is the value of wisdom. Uh, we are actually at less than two, and uh, the we're ready to get started. I like this picture here because it talks about choose wisely. On one hand, there's an apple, and on the other hand, there's a donut. And, it, and the caption is choose wisely. Do we do that today? Are we actually choosing and we're doing it wisely? So you remember back in the Olympics, uh, there's a guy by the name of Michael Felt who actually recorded eight gold medals in the 2008 Beijing Olympics. So basically, um, the story is told that in 2004, during the Athens Olympics at Athens, Greece, uh, Philip actually earned a spot on a 4 by 100 meter uh, relay. He decided to give up his spot to the Iron Cocker. Now, Cocker was a swimmer in what he thought was his final Olympics, and he had yet to earn a gold medal. Well, that particular Olympics, uh, Cocker received the gold medal because he was actually um, on that team that won the relay. Phillips gesture of withdrawing for the race for the sake of his teammate um, winning a gold medal is more than just swimming. It made him a champion of a different kind in the eyes of many. So today's scripture, Solomon encourages his son, uh, all readers, to pursue something far more value, valuable than any precious metal. So we're starting the first outline. First outline is entitled Earthly Father's Plea. So first we search for wisdom. That's in the first four verses. I want you to notice it says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commands with thee, so that thy incline thy ear into wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest out for knowledge and lift up thy voice of understanding, if thou seek, seekest her as silver, and searches for her as for hidden treasures. Now, again, this is parallelism. So it's actually a repeat. So if you look at, if you look at the um, the first sentence there, if thou will receive thy words and then hide my commands with thee. So receive the words, hide it, treasure those words, hide it. Sometimes, you know, when you get something real good to eat, you put it in the refrigerator and you hide it somewhere for a special occasion. This is what the, the, the writer of uh, Proverbs, Solomon is saying, hide those things, it's precious. But I want you to focus on that last verse. If you notice that last verse, it says, for thy seek her as silver, searches for her as hidden treasures. That reminds me, if you look to Matthew 13, 44 through 46, you remember when Jesus says the kingdom of, of God's kingdom, now the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden. And when you find it, you go and you try to raise that money and, and buy that field because it's so precious. Uh, look at verses 44 to 46. The kingdom, uh, God's kingdom is like a jewel merchant on a hunt for an excellent pearl. He finds one that is flawless. He immediately sells everything and he buys it. So hidden treasures, even Jesus talks about how precious it is. And let's keep that in thought as we go through the scriptures. So then we look at it and that first five, first five, after you seek it and you find it, it brings it back out again. It says, then thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord. So once you find wisdom, what is that? It is the fear of the Lord. Now, this is not, again, we talked about this last week. Basically, what this is telling us is that if, you, if the son would dedicate himself fully to the search of wisdom, then he will understand the fear of the Lord. Remember, even last week. We talked about that in verse one through seven by saying the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord, that's reverence him. That is not being afraid of him. You begin to really understand that. And if you notice, I take the Lord, L-O-R-D, and I capitalize that because that verse, it is capital. That's talking about Yahweh, the one and true God. 
And then verses um, uh, 6 through 10, for the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. And then it talks about the protection for the wise. That's verse 7 and 8. And I like that because it says he's a buckler to them that walk upright. And a buckler is like a shield. Once you get this wisdom, how it's going to protect you. And then it's going to preserve you like saints. And then verse uh, 9 through 11 is the preservation of wisdom. And notice here it talks about understanding. Then thou shalt understand righteous and judgment and equity. Yea, every good path. When findest wisdom enters into thine heart, when wisdom enters into thine heart, knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Parallelism. Discretion shall preserve thee. So, so that pleasant, preserve thee, discretion, understanding shall keep thee. Now, I want you to focus on these words here. Look at the words righteousness, judgment, equity, all are together. And then the word wisdom, knowledge, discretion, and understanding. So Solomon uses four key words today. If you don't get anything else out of this lesson, I want you to get these four words when you look at the text here. All right. And those four words actually have a different meaning. So the first word is discretion. And if you look at verse 11, it states discretion shall preserve thee. So that word actually means preserve, protects a person. And then the word knowledge, if you look at verse six, it says, for the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, knoweth knowledge and understanding. So what is knowledge? A familiar, familiarity with facts and people that allows one's experience to experience them intimately. That's knowledge. When you take your experience and you understand the facts and you have an experience of that intimately. And then wisdom. That's the ability to discern the right attitude, belief, or the course of action. And that's and you look at verse six eight. For the Lord giveth wisdom. And then understanding. If you look at verse eleven, the second part of that verse, understanding shall keep thee. So what is understanding? Understanding is the process data to accomplish a task. So it's when you are able to process the information and you get an understanding of that. So if we take those words, discretion, we take knowledge, we take wisdom, and we take an understanding, what do you get? There it is, a treasure. I like that because you take discretion, you take knowledge, you take wisdom and understanding, there's your treasure. And you find that in God's word. So the most important treasure hunt that we can go on is to search God's word for the teaching that will lead us to discretion, to knowledge, to wisdom, and to understanding. So I end with this. When you think about a lifesaver, when I was real young, I was a lifeguard uh, at the local swimming pool. And in round there, we had a flotation device. It was our life preserver. So if anyone um, needed help and they got that in the, the, the deep, we would usually throw them a flotation device. That's prevent us from being pulled under the water. And then how do we use the phrase? How do we use phrases like being a real lifesaver in a figurative way? Well, something or someone that keeps us from experiencing negative consequences and a potentially dangerous situation. So if we sum all that up, it says when God, when has godly wisdom been a lifesaver to you? In other words, what are some times when applying Bible truth help you avoid disaster? Think about that. How could keeping a journal on occasion when godly wisdom has preserved you be beneficial? Yesterday, I'm cleaning out my file cabinet. And I kept something. I encourage you all to do this when you're down and out. And I was really down and out in the year 2000. I wrote in my journal what was happening to me. 
And then I found it yesterday. I looked back at it and oh, how far off was I? If I would have actually dealt, dealt, did what I was feeling at that time, I would not be where I am today. So I encourage you, keep a journal. Write down your thoughts. And don't ache on your feelings, but ache on what is why. Which is back to the thoughts for you remember today. God's wisdom never depreciates in day. Choose wisely. Don't choose them based on your feelings. Choose what's right based on God's word. So just remember this thought. God's wisdom never depreciates. Thank you. See you in Sunday school.